the libido doctor <laughs> is in. Hello and welcome to Libido Doc, a place where we talk about human sexuality with a focus on married women. I'm Dr. Suzanne, and today I would like to talk about who is your spouse? Are you married to a wife or a helpmate? Last time, we talked about how to find your wife God's way. And if you've not seen that video, go back and watch it. Today, our scripture is based on the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapters 29 and 30, we learn about Jacob, who is married to two women, Rachel and Leah. And we want to extract from these scriptures who among the two was the wife and who was the helpmate? To help us do that, we want to look at five different characteristics. First of all, the resemblance with the husband. Second, the emotions of each woman. Third, the type of love she was displaying. Fourth, the type of children and legacy she brought to the table. And then fifth, how she acts in front of the mission, the divine mission. What do you really see that makes the difference, all right? Number one, the resemblance. If we go back in Genesis uh, chapter two, verse 18 and 19, we see that God looked at Adam and he said, it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make him a help meet. Help meet is, um, a help, you know, a helper that has the same caliber as you. Remember in Genesis 1:27, when God created male and female, he created them on the same platform to be fruitful, to multiply, to subdue the earth. They had the same capacity. They are made in God's image, right? But when God said, I will make him a help me, in Genesis 2, 19, he first brought out a lot of animals for Adam to observe them and name them. Which tells me that even as human beings, we have our own race of animals. We have our own way of behaving. You know, sometimes you can hear people tell you, you're acting like a dog or you have the heart of a lion. It tells me that each human being has its own tribe that can be likened to the animal kingdom. So in the first part here, I want to talk about the resemblance. When your spouse is a wife and when your spouse is a helpmate, what can you see in the resemblance? <laughs> if she is your helpmate, she will come from the same animal type tribe as you. Let's look at Leah and Rachel. Jacob came from a place over there where he just overtook the blessing of his brother. He was not caring about A, B, C, or D. He was in to get what he had to get. That's the type of heart he had. He wanted the lion's share. Leah, when it was time to marry the husband promised to her sister, she did not care. She stood there and she decided to go in and marry him. You can already tell that Leah and Jacob were from the same tribe. The tribe of people who want the lion's share. And when Jacob actually went to that country, and met Laban. He talked to Laban and related everything that happened to him before. And Laban told him, you are bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Because Laban saw in Jacob something that he had himself. Remember, <laughs> Laban was a crooked. <laughs> Laban was so crooked. So he saw that in Jacob. And being a wizard himself, he was a high priest. He knew his daughter and he knew who among his daughters was the same tribe as Jacob. That's why he went behind 
And he said, no, Leah must be the first wife, right? So Leah is the help meet because on the point of resemblance, she is cut from the same fabric as Jacob. Rachel was different. Her behavior was not of someone who was courageous like a lion. And, and you have to know, eh, Leah comes from Leo. Eh? She's a lioness, okay? Rachel was different. Maybe she was a goat, or, you know, maybe she was something else, but she was definitely not cut from the tribe of the lions. That's the first thing. In terms of resemblance, there is perfect match. We're coming from the same tribe. Now, in terms of emotions, Leah as a help me, Leah is courageous. She is not afraid. When Jacob was going back to meet his brother Esau, Leah was at the front. She was not afraid because she said, look, I'm a lioness. Come here and cross this line. She was not afraid at all. She is courageous. She is not a complainer. Even though she perceived that her husband didn't love her, she didn't complain to him. She went to God. She was crying out to God, Father, look what they are doing to me. He doesn't love me. And God kept giving her these wonderful children that became the legacy of her husband, right? So now, Rachel was so needy. She was so demanding. She was a crybaby, always complaining. Oh, you're not giving me children. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. Ah! She was a wife. A, a lot of wives are like that. Always wanting attention. Always crying at the shoulder. Always complaining to make sure that, yes, he loves me. He loves me. That's a Rachel. She's a wife. Okay? She's a wife. They criticize, they micromanage. Can you believe that she even had a schedule for when her husband would sleep with her sister? That's what they do, those wives who want to, to be on your head like that, okay? So now, three, the type of love each one of them displayed. Leah had an unconditional love. She didn't care that her husband had another wife or even concubines she was here for a mission and she was going to make sure that the mission gets accomplished but rachel her love was conditional oh you must love me more you must be with me all the time oh if you don't do this i'm going to die she gave condition to her husband for her presence in the marriage he had to give her children even though it wasn't in his capacity or his power, because we can see that behind the scene, God's power was at work, preventing Rachel from having children early and favoring Leah. But still, Rachel used this as a condition for her love for Jacob. You understand? So the wives, most of the time, we display conditional love. She comes into the marriage for a reason, because she wants to be seen as the first lady. She wants to enjoy the riches. She wants to be the one everybody is going to bow to. It's conditional. Unconditional love women, they're just there making sure that, okay, let's make sure that the husband is on the pedestal. Let's make sure that he gets the light. Let's make sure that this divine mission is going to be accomplished no matter what happens, all right? So now, the fourth uh, point here, we're talking about children. And we see that for Leah, God blessed her, and she was bringing forth these baby boys. And every child was named after a relationship she was having with God, because she was not being loved, but she was complaining to God. Well, God heard my cry. God answered my prayer. Now God is with me. Now I will praise God. You know, she always put first and forth her relationship with God, right? But we see Rachel was in competition. She had to have these children no matter what. 
So while her sister was having this baby boys, she decided to give her meat to her husband and, you know, get the babies on her lap so they become her children. But even though she got those children, those two children, <clears throat> that way she was still very bitter and jealous of her sister because she wanted to prove to the world that she's fruitful she can have these children these are her biological children not just the children from her maid because people are talking too much let me prove to them that i can have babies ah! a lot of women do that they want to prove to the family that she can have a boy she, she wants to prove to her friends that uh, she can uh, she's fruitful mm -mm. you have to go to god remember the story of hannah after she fought against penina so much and she was in her ego she finally said look i'm not going anywhere with this let me just go talk to god and as soon as she shifted her focus god blessed her with the child it tells me that the children we bring forth, children are a gift from God, though, and they are a reward from the womb. So a woman who has her children on the basis of competition or let's show people that I can also have this and that, hey, be careful, though. be careful. They might not be children of destiny the way God wants it to be. Remember when uh, uh, Leah gave praise to God for having Judah. God was happy. And what happened? Judah became the legacy child who became the king and sat on the throne until Jesus came, sat on that throne, the root of David, and he is now seated at the right hand of the father. What does that tell you? The wife who doesn't understand the dimension of the divine mission is going to operate in her ego and try to show the world that she is the one. But the wife who is to help me, who understands that I am here to help, to be of equal strength and make sure that what God has planted in this man for generations comes to pass, you can see the difference, all right? And you can also notice that Leah had the most children. She contributed to at least 70% of uh, Jacob's uh, offsprings, okay? And most importantly, 100% of the legacy child, which was Judah, brought Jesus. All right, so now, the most important thing, in my opinion, is the divine mission. And let's see how those two women would act. The wife and the help me. The wife will support the husband. She will go out there and be industrious. Bring in the money. Give the money. Okay, baby, let's do this. Honey, let's do that. But on top of that, she wants to micromanage. She wants to control what he does. Who is doing that with him? She wants to have her say. She wants to have her name everywhere because people must know that it is me. It is me. Because people say that behind a, a, a great man, there is a, a great woman. Hey, the help me doesn't act like that too. The help me is quiet, but she's at the side. She's not at the back. <laughs> I remember she comes from the rib. She is standing firm giving her shoulder, putting her hand in front of them, like, hey, baby, I'm here with you. She gets downloads and keys to the divine mission. When we say a wise woman builds, builds her house, what do you think it is? Bible also says that our fingers, God teaches our fingers to fight and our hands to war. The things you write, the things you sign, the ideas you bring forth to create uh, uh, boundaries for how this divine mission is being done it's all part of the keys of the kingdom all right so the help me because she goes deep in the spirit she's like the eagle she's going to rise and begin to download all these things whether she wants it or not oh, if is the predestined person god has picked for the man 
God will overwhelm her with all those ideas. If she's wise, she will begin to bring it forth. She will begin to, to, to bring it to fruition, okay? But the wife wants to overtake. She wants to, to, to do it the way she wants it to be done. Ha! Ah, that's how it is. Now, the other thing also, you will see that the helpmeet is a gatekeeper. What do I mean by gatekeeper? In terms of spiritual warfare, she will anticipate things to come because the Holy Spirit gives her those insights and she will begin to wage war in the spirit. Even before the things are happening, she will subdue the enemies of her husband's mission. The wife is a prayer warrior. She will just begin to pray when the things are happening. So things can happen in the spirit for a whole year, for two years, she's not aware. It's only when the things are becoming, you know, open and to the, the physical that she's like, hey, let me go pray, let me go pray, let me do this. No, the, the, the help me is a gatekeeper. She doesn't even allow those things to, to manifest because she has a spiritual radar. And as soon as she identifies, she cuts your throat. So as a woman, who are you? Are you a wife? Are you a help me? Who are you? All right? So this was Dr. Suzanne. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye.